that's great. Really great that that happens as soon as I hit record. <laughs> well, you can just cut that part out. Just unbelievable. Hi! It's all but gold. Yeah, welcome. I'm KG. With me is my co-host Forrest, my currently annoyed co-host Forrest. Hello. I'm currently annoyed co-host Forrest. <laughs> and we're back. Wonderful with... to meet you. And we're back with another chapter in... Jedi Search, the first of the Jedi Academy trilogy by Kevin J. Anderson. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Now that we're 10 chapters in, what do you think of it so far? Globs. Blobs. Blobs. In the bobs. Glitter stim. <laughs> uh-huh. I'm pretty positive the guy was high when he was writing this book. I'm pretty positive. Or- remember, the remember this is the material that people um, preferred over the sequel trilogy, well, we- which again I dislike. But, uh, you know, you gotta admit, there wasn't uh, stuff like glitter stim and, and blobs and lube. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, like, that Mandalorian episode with Lizzo was any better. Yeah, uh, well, actually, if anything, that episode was very faithful to <laughs> the, the tone of the EU. Really. Yeah, maybe that's why I kind of didn't mind it that much. You really did not mind it that much. Everyone else hated it and thought it was stupid. Myself included. (laughs) And then you read the EU and you're like, oh, yeah. It's really not that different. (laughs) The whole plot line with the the, the queen that's, Mm -hmm. like, obsessed over this guy, that's such a Clone Wars storyline. Maybe even a Mandalorian storyline now that I I think about it. I was going to say, I think it feels more Mandalorian. Yeah, it really does. Anyway, let's continue with Chapter 10. I do DoorDash now. What do you do? Yeah, I do DoorDash now. What do you do? (laughs) All right, chapter 10. (laughs) Images of starships whirled through space like pinpoints of fire around Coruscant. The holographic map of the system showed the location of all vessels in range and plotted approved approach orbits on a huge spherical grid. Data terminals spewed information on vessel sizes and landing requirements, keeping track of anyone reporting impaired control. A scattering of red danger zones marked debris clouds or wrecked ships that had not yet been removed from the Battle of a Coruscant. Dozens of space traffic controllers stood at their stations around the 3D map of the planet, pointing at images with light pens and drawing safe approach vectors or prioritizing landing patterns. One of the war-damaged spaceports in the western end of Imperial City had just been brought back online in the last week, and much of the shuttle traffic was being rerouted there to ease the burden on landing platforms around the Imperial Palace. Leia Organa Solo stood by... Leia Organa Solo stood beside one of the traffic controllers. Seeing how busy the woman was directing space traffic, Leia tried not to ask too many questions, but she found it too difficult to wait. There's something, the traffic controller reached up with the light pen to indicate a squarish violet icon used for small starship type unknown. Could that be the one you're waiting for, Minister Organa Solo? Just popped out of hyperspace, unable to determine previous vector. Leia felt a surge of excitement. Yes, that's the one. Have they requested clearance yet? The traffic controller touched a receiver implant on her temple. Coming in now. The pilot sends only her name. Sounds like some kind of code. Winter? Leia smiled. No, that's her real name. Give her clearance to land on the top north side platform of the Imperial of the Imperial Palace. My authorization. She drew in a deep breath, feeling her heart pound faster. I'll go meet her personally. She turned and took two quick steps away before she remembered to thank the traffic controller for her help. Come on, 3PO, Leia said as she bustled past him. The protocol droid snapped to attention, then hurried after her with his stiff-legged gait. He had returned to Coruscant with R2 and Lando three days earlier and spent four hours in a luxurious lubricant and scrubber bath. Now oh, more lube. <laughs> it makes sense. Robot. <laughs> yeah, I know. Robot. <laughs> more lube. Now he gleamed like new, with all traces of blob mucus removed from his finish. That's <laughs> how I'm feeling after going past those chapters. <laughs> Leia heard 3PO's motivators humming as he followed. She ignored him, lost in her own conflicting thoughts. Han should have been back from Kessel two days ago, but she still had... But still, she had heard no word for him. He'd probably fallen in with some of his old smuggling buddies, had too much to drink, gambled far into late hours, and completely forgotten about his other obligation. And completely forgotten about his other obligations. It was a good thing Chewbacca had sworn a blood oath to protect him, because Han was going to have to face her when he got back, and he was going to need a Wookiee's protection. How dare he forget something like this? For now, Leia would welcome her her twin children home, alone. Standing on the top deck of the palace, Leia craned her neck and searched the hazy skies. Coruscant's aurora shimmered through the twilight, eclipsed by the, great, eclipsed by the complex matrix of the great orbiting shipyards. 3PO, tell me the minute you see them coming. The breeze tossed loose strands of her hair in front of her eyes. Yes, Mistress Leia, I'm searching. 
In an imitation of a human gesture, Three Peel cupped two golden hands around his optic lenses as if the optic sensors, as if it would help him focus better. Don't you think it would be wiser for us to step back slightly from the edge? Leia held her breath. Her children were coming home. They had not set foot on Coruscant for nearly two years, but now they would be back to stay. She could be a real mother to them, at last. Just after their birth, the twins had been sequestered on a secret planet uncovered by Luke and Admiral Akbar. It was a world uncharted on any... Unrecorded. It was a Unrecorded. Wor- <laughs> it was a world unrecorded on any chart, but habitable and protected. Luke and Akbar had established a heavily... Go- Luke and Akbar had established a heavily guarded base there, leaving Leia's trusted servant Winter behind to watch over the Jedi children. She, just, she suspected Luke had given the children a bit more than just Winter for protection, though. During their protective isolation, Leia had managed to visit Jason, Jaina, and Anakin every few months, usually with Han in tow. At a prearranged time, Winter would pop out of hyperspace in a long-distance shuttle. Without ever knowing their destination, Leia and Han would climb aboard the shuttle, be sealed in the back passenger compartment, and Winter would take them to the protected planet. The New Republic... The New Republic Senate was appalled at Myst- Leia's mysterious movements, but Luke and Akbar had silenced their objections. Leia hoped she would be able to find the time to visit her baby, her baby boy, little Anakin, now that she had the twins to watch over. It would be a tragedy if she had to be even less of a mother to the baby than she had been to these two. There it is, Mistress Leia. Tepia pointed up at the flickering point of light that grew brighter every second. A shuttle is coming down. She felt a spasm of anxiety mixed with a thrill of excitement. The shuttle approached, winking red and green lights in the twilight sky. It circled the former Imperial Palace, then activated its repulsor lifts to come down with a gentle sigh on the landing platform. Angular and bug-like, the shuttle bore no markings, no indication of its planet of origin. With a hiss of equalizing pressure, the hatch of the shuttle's passenger compartment split open, gently extending a ramp. Leia bit her lip and took a step forward, squinting into the sharp shadows. The shuttle blocked most of the breeze, leaving the area still and silent. The young twins stepped out of the side-by-side and waited at the top of the ramp. Leia stared at Jason and Jaina, both self-composed and dark-haired, with wide, avid eyes and small faces that looked like ghosts of Han and Leia. After a second's hesitation, Leia ran up the ramp, gathering the children in her arms. Both Jason and Jaina hugged their mother. Welcome home, she said, whispering. She sensed fear and reservation in them. Leia realized with a pang that she was a virtual stranger to, stranger to them. Winter had been their nanny for as long as they could remember. Leia, just, Leia had been just a visitor whenever she could find time in her duties. But she would make it up to them. She promised herself that much. All the outstanding obligations rose up in her mind, haunting her with the specter of duty. <clears throat> she still had to deal with her car- the Cardin ambassador and a dozen thousand and a thousand other delicate tasks to hold the New Republic together. Dozens of planetary systems were on the verge of joining the Republic as if, if a skilled representative of Leia showed good faith by vit- making a visit of state. Slow down! <laughs> Sorry! Slow down! <laughs> Dozens of planetary systems were on the verge of joining the Republic if a skilled representative, if a skilled representative Leia herself, showed a good faith by making a visit of state. If Mon Mothma summoned Leia to help ratify a treaty or to take a, or to take her place at a state dinner, how could Leia refuse? The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance, clearly dependent on what she did. How could mere children take precedent over that? And what kind of mother did it make her even to think about it? Where's Daddy? No, I won't. <laughs> I won't go for that. Daddy. <laughs> Daddy, not in front of the malcontent. No, the malcontent, that's right. Not in front of the malcontent. (laughs) (laughs) Where's Daddy? Jason asked. Anger went through Leia like a spear of ice. He's not here right now. Winter finally worked her way back from the pilot compartment. Leia looked up at her friend and confidant, and warm memories washed over her. Winter had had snow-white hair for as long as Leia could remember, a serene face that rarely allowed even a twinge of anger to show through. Noticing Han's absence, Winter raised her eyebrows, filling her face with questions, but she remained silent. "'Where's baby Anakin?' Jaina asked. "'He has to stay with me for a little while longer,' Winter said, nudging the two children down the ramp. "'Come now, we'll take you to your new home.' The two children dutifully marched ahead, with Leia following close beside them. Threepio didn't seem to know what he was expected to do during the reunion, so he just followed." waving his arms and making flustered exclamations. How long will you stay here? Jason asked. Where's our room? Jaina said. Leia smiled at the questions and took a deep breath before answering them. From now on, she had a feeling she would be hearing a lot of questions. When Leia finally kissed the twins goodnight, Threepio couldn't decide whether mother or twins looked more exhausted. Leia pushed loose dark hair away from her eyes as she stood at the doorway to their room and blew another kiss. After adjusting his server motors to allow a little more flexibility in his joints, Threepio hunkered down between the, twin, between the twins' beds. He had already taken care of important details, such as providing fresh cups of water for the children and installing small nightlights in the dark corners. 
You two be good for 3 p.m., Leia said. He'll stay here until you go to sleep. You've had exciting things happen today, and we'll do a lot more tomorrow. I'm so glad to have you back. Leia's flash of heartfelt smile at them, showing joy even though the weir- even through the weariness on her face. I'm certain I can handle this, Mistress Leia, 3 p.m. said. I have reviewed most of the available child psychology databases, except for those recommended by the Emperor, of course. <laughs> Children are strange and foreign to me. I never really was one. I know that they are an important part of the ecosystem. <laughs> Anyone who remembered the series of unfortunate events movie. <laughs> I'm just imagining that he wrote that. that he wrote yeah, he just book. wrote this, <laughs> wrote these, you know, chi- like how to take care of your child <laughs> books. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if we go off of the EU, he had a three eyed son. <laughs> so <laughs> he might have had some experience. A little bit. Know. Leia's answering look seemed to carry a bit of skepticism, which puzzled 3PO. Don't want to go sleep, Jason said, sitting up in bed. Leia still smiled. But you need your rest. Maybe 3PO will tell you a bedtime story if you're good. She moved once more and then faded back into the main living area. Just imagine that if 3PO is going to tell a bedtime story to them, he's going to use the same sound effects that he used in Return of the Jedi as he's telling the, the story of the original trilogy. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> hey, maybe that's the story he's telling them. Maybe that's the story he'll tell them. No, what, the, the story he's telling them is the story of the sequel trilogy, and these kids are like, the story is so... <laughs> that was a better story, Uncle 3 P. <laughs> no, what he did was he told them the story of Dark Empire, and they're like, this story sucks. <laughs> or maybe the courtship of Princess Leia. Yeah, the courtship of Princess Leia. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, the children had indeed had a busy day. After their journey with Winter, they had been taken on the quick tour of the Imperial Palace, then shown their new quarters. Even with her duties as Minister of State, Leia had managed to redecorate the be- twins' bedchamber in warm, soothing colors. 3 Pio would have offered his own assistance in the project, but at the time he had been with Lando Carizian at the Blob Races. Thinking back, 3 Pio would have preferred the, dec- the decorating chores. Several times during the tour, Leia was interrupted by insistent calls, documents that needed to be authorized, brief conversations that could not be delayed. Each time, Leia looked guilty, as if realizing this was an indication of things to come. The twins, though filled with excitement and wonder of the new things around them, grew cranky as they became tired. They had been overwhelmed by too much strangeness in one day, given a new home, and told to sleep in an unfamiliar room. According to the information 3 had recently uploaded, it was perfectly normal for the children to cause, mild, to cause minor difficulties. Mild difficulties. Minor difficulties. Minor difficulties. Don't want a bedtime story. Jason said, <laughs> Croft. No, you gotta say it like a toddler. Don't want a bedtime story. Jason said, crossing his small hands over his chest and looking defiantly at 3PO. No story, Jaina echoed. Of course you do, 3PO insisted. Listen here, you little sh- (laughs) (laughs) I am going to strangle you now. (laughs) You are nothing but a bunch of whiny jowers. (laughs) That first one really got to me. I have scoured the collected works of children's literature on thousands of planetary systems. Oh, I have selected what I believe will be a truly enjoyable story. It is called The Little Lost Panther Club. A cl- um. <laughs> the, it is called The Little Lost Panther Club, a classic that has been popular for generations with children of your age. He had been looking forward to telling the story, recalling how much he had enjoyed telling the Ewoks of his adventures with Master Luke and Captain Solo. He even selected some very exciting sound effects for appropriate points in the at the club. Oh, okay. So I was right on point then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He'd even selected some very exciting sound effects for appropriate points in the Bantha Cub story. 3 had never actually been close to a live Bantha during his time on Tatooine, but Bantha Riders, the Tusken Raiders, had dismantled him during their first attack on Master Luke. He supposed that gave him some small claim to expertise. Don't want a story, Jason repeated. Both children had unruly dark hair and the deep brown eyes of their mother. Right now, the young boy had a determined and stubborn look on his face that 3 had often seen on Han Solo. 
The UPO realized that the issue had a hand had very little to do with the actual story. According to his new information on young children, the twins right, were right now feeling displaced and helpless. With so many things out of their control, they needed to exert their power, to insist on some tiny spot of stability. Jason needed to see that he could have some effect in his surroundings. Right now, the boy was very upset. Jaina, picking up on her brother's distress, seemed on the verge of tears. Very well, young Master Jason. I will tell the story some other time. <clears throat> GPO knew just the trick to keep the twins happy and let them drift off to sleep. He was, after all, fluent in over six million forms of communication. He could sing lullabies in any number of languages, any number of styles. He selected a few that were guaranteed to please the twins. Jason and Jaina would be asleep in no time. He began to sing. Now what are they crying about? Oh gosh, yeah. It's like 3PO <laughs> is singing. It would make any child cry. <laughs> Just hear 3PO, like, this horrific sounding singing and the children are screaming for mercy. <laughs> now what are they crying about? Leia said, sitting up sharply and looking toward the bedroom. Maybe I should go and see. Winter reached out to touch her wrist, stopping her. It'll be all right. They're tired. They're frightened. They're anxious. Bear with them. And since you're new to them, they'll be testing your limits every moment, finding out how they can manipulate you. Don't teach them that you'll come running every time they make a sound. Children learn these sorts of things very quickly. Leia sighed and looked at her personal servant. For years, Winter had advised her many things, and she was usually right. Looks like I'm the one who needs to learn things quickly. Every part of it is a learning process. You must balance your love for them with what their need... You must balance your love for them with their need for stability. That's what parenting is all about. Leia scowled as hidden concern began to drown out her happiness at having the children back with her. But but the singing, it will kill them. <laughs> <laughs> they will die. <laughs> I might be doing this all by myself. Winter's gaze seemed inquisitive. Winter's gaze, Winter's gaze seemed incisive, and she asked the question that had been on her mind for hours. Where is Han? He's not here, that's where he is. Now wanting Winter to see her flustered outrage, Leia stood up and turned her back. Over and over again. She had imagined possibilities of Han hurt, lost, attacked, but she found it safer to believe other possibilities. He's flying around in the Falcon with Chewbacca. He should have been back two days ago. He knew when the twins were coming home, but he couldn't even bother to be here. It's bad enough we've been practically non-existent as parents for the first two years of their lives, but he can't even spare the time to greet Jason and Jane when they finally come home. Han had, fi Han had felt the razor of Leia's words many times, and her tongue had grown more precise with years of diplomatic practice. A small part of her was glad he was not here to bear the brunt of her anger. But then again, if he had been here, she would not have had cause for such anger. Where did he go? Leia waved her hand, trying to sound casual. Off to Kessel to see if he could convince any of the old spice miners to join the New Republic. He hasn't bothered to call since he left. <clears throat> Winter gazed at her, not blinking. Winter's intense periods of thought, saw Winter's intense periods of thought always unsettled Leia. Let me tell you this, Leia. I think I'm right. If it were anyone else on a mission like this, two days overdue and no contact for a week or so, you would be re you would be concerned, very concerned. With Han, you are making an assumption that he is just being irresponsible. What if something happened to him? That's crazy. She turned away. She turned away again to keep Winter from seeing that the same worries had been plaguing her. Winter's grave expression did not, did not change. According to the reports I have seen, Kessel is relatively hostile territory. Not only the spice mines, but the Imperial Correction Facility, with some powerful defenses in place to keep prisoners from escaping. The entire system has been out of contact with us for some time. Winter paused, as if accessing other memories. When Ma Jade and Talon Khan unified some of the smugglers two years ago, Jade noted that Kessel might cause certain problems. Shouldn't you check a diplomat Shouldn't you check with the diplomatic contact there to make certain nothing has happened to the Millennium Falcon? Leia blinked her eyes, annoyed at Winter's suggestion, though she thought of it herself dozens of times. Seems like overreacting, doesn't it? Winter regarded her calmly. Or are you just unwilling to show your concern because it would embarrass you? The private communications chamber looked different on the bustle of a bright morning on Coruscant. The last time Leia had stood inside the room had been to contact the infuriating Cardian ambassador in the dead of night. Now, as she looked out the mirrored walls, Leia watched minor functionaries hurrying to daily assignments, administrative and service personnel who'd probably worked in Imperial City for years, caring little for what overall government ruled the galaxy. Not long ago, Leia had thought, the Alliance had been made up of the bravest and most dedicated fighters, who, those willing to die for their ideals. How could the New Republic degenerate into bureaucracy so quickly? She thought of the heroes she had known, like Jack, Por like Jack Porkins and Big Star Glider, who had died to destroy the first Death Star. She hoped their spirits still remained somewhere in the new government. At the transmission console, Winter made a small noise to attract Leia's, content Leia's attention. This has been difficult, Leia, but I think I have a contact. 
The entire city of Cassandra seems to be abandoned, but I was able to obtain communication codes for the Imperial Correction Facility. With further inquiries, I have tracked down a person who seems to be at least nominally in charge of what passes for a government there. His name is Morth Duel, originally the administration of the prison. Somehow, he is now overseeing the spice mining operations. There seems to be a quite a bit of chaos there. My first contact was with the garrison at station on Kessel's Moon. Everyone seems quite alarmed at being contacted by the New Republic. I was bounced to several others before Morth Duel finally agreed to speak with us. He's waiting for you now. Go ahead, Leia said. Winter checked her board, then initiated contact. Leia stepped into the transmission field. A small hologram of a frog-like creature appeared above the, da the dais. Static caused by poor transmission equipment on Kessel's end smeared Duel's coloring into yellowish-green. His archaic waistcoat and bright yellow karat made him look a comical figure. Made him look... Made him look a comical figure. Look... Oh. Oh, yeah. Now, now that I think about it, it's kind of weird that it doesn't say like. Made him look like a comical figure. Look, look a comical figure is fine. <clears throat> You must be Minister Organa Solo, Duel said. He spread his hands toward her image in a placating gesture. She noticed, she noticed that he wore some sort of mechanical contraption, a focusing mechanism perhaps, over one of his lantern-like eyes. I am extremely pleased to hear from a representative of the New Republic, and I apologize for any difficulty in getting in touch with me. We've had some social turmoil over the past couple of years, and I am afraid we have not yet managed to quell all disturbances. His fleshy amphibian lips stretched upward and must, must have been meant... <laughs> fleshy amphibian lips. His fleshy amphibian lips stretched upward in what must have been meant as a smile. A long, sharp tongue flicked out as he spoke, but Duel talked so quickly that Leia could not get a word in edgewise. Ed <laughs> <laughs> Well, <laughs> in her years of diplomatic service, Leia had learned not to count too much. Read, I mean, yeah, we'll do that again. <clears throat> clear your throat. Yeah, in her years of diplomatic service, Leia had learned not to count too much on reading body language from non-humans. But could this be a sign of nervousness? Now then, Minister, how can I help you? Believe me, we have been considering sending a representative. That's you. Oh, no way, that's me. I looked ahead for a second. <laughs> Believe me, we've been considering sending a representative to establish relations with the New Republic. I would like to extend an invitation for you to send an ambassador to our world in the interests of maintaining harmony. On Kessel, we like to think of the New Republic as our friends. Duel stopped talking abruptly as if he realized he had said too much. Leia frowned inwardly but controlled her <clears throat> Leia frowned inwardly but controlled her expression. Morith Duel was saying exactly what she wanted to hear, giving perfect political answers without her having to ask the questions. Odd. What was he thinking? Actually, Mr. Duel, I'm afraid I don't know your proper I'm afraid I don't know your proper title. How do you wish to be addressed? Duel stared with his one eye and fiddled with the mechanical lens as if he had never considered the question before. Uh, Commissioner Duel will do nicely, I think. Commissioner Duel, I welcome your offer of openness and cooperation, and I hope we have not already acted prematurely. One of our representatives was sent to Kessel more than a week ago, but we have heard nothing from him. He was due to return three days ago. I'm contacting you to see if you could verify if he did arrive, if he did indeed arrive safely. Duel raised his long-figured hands to his cheeks, like this. A representative, you say? Here? I am aware of no such arrival. Never heard of it. <laughs> it's An like, arrival? Never heard of it. <laughs> don't even know the meaning of the word. <laughs> yeah, right. Leia kept her face placid, though her heart grew cold. Could you check to see if his ship, the Millennium Falcon, arrived? We had some difficulty tracking down a person in charge just moments ago. Perhaps you reported to someone other than yourself. Duel sounded doubtful. Well, of course I can check. He punched at a data terminal and seemed beyond the fringe of the transmission field. Almost immediately, too fast, Leia thought. Duel straightened. Nope, nothing here by that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you there was no terminal. No. He just, like, pressed to the air <laughs> off screen. <laughs> like, hmm, let me check. Oh, no, I don't see anything like that here. And he's just staring at his servant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nope. There's no screen. There's no screen. There's no terminal. Terminal is a lie. 
No, I am sorry, Minister. We have no record of a ship called the Millennium Falcon ever arriving in Kessel Space. Who was piloting the ship? His name is Han Solo. He is my husband. Dill strained in shock. I'm terribly sorry to hear that. <laughs> is he a good pilot? <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> Stupid. Is he a good pilot? As you may know, the black hole cluster near Kessel makes for extremely hazardous flying conditions, even in hyperspace. The mall is one of the wonders of the galaxy, but if he was to take a wrong path through the cluster, I hope nothing happened to him. Leia leans deeper into the transmission field. Han is a very good pilot, Commissioner Duel. I'll muster a search team at once, Minister. I told the, I told her we're mustering a search team. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, Kessel will offer whatever assistance we can in this matter. We'll scour the surface of the planet and the moon, and we'll search space for any disabled ship. I will inform you immediately of any progress we make. You will never hear from me again. <laughs> Duel reached forward to the controls of his hollow transmitter, then paused. And of course, we look forward to formally receiving any other ambassador you choose to send. <laughs> I hope the next time we speak will be under happier circumstances, Mr. Min Minister Organa <laughs> Solo. As Moroth Duel's image fizzled into static, Lay let her sony expression fall into a scowl of confusion and suspicion. Winter looked up from her controls. I detected no outright contradictions of fact, but I'm not convinced the total of the t but I'm not convinced of the total truth of what he was saying. Leia's gaze focused on something far away. Anxiety twisted her insides, and she felt really very foolish for being angry with Han. And anxiety twisted her insides, and she felt very foolish for being angry with Han. Something is definitely wrong here. Yeah, Duel's an idiot, basically. <laughs> He's just kind He's of He's trying a... to lie to Leia. Right. He's an idiot. Sister to Luke Skywalker, wife to Han Solo. Minister of State of the New Republic. Granddaughter of Anakin Skywalker. Granddaughter of mm -hmm. Anakin Skywalker. Adopted yeah. daughter of... of um, Senator Bail Organa. Senator Bail mm -hmm. Organa. Yeah. Daughter of Padme Amidala. <laughs> <laughs> right. The list goes on in terms of the offenses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. You said granddaughter of Anakin Skywalker? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, daughter, daughter of Anakin, Anakin Skywalker. Skywalker and I don't Padme know why Amidala. I said that. Yeah. Um, I cannot believe I said that. I'm I'm a huge Star Wars fan here. Nope, you've lost your you've lost your rights. Uh, you thought I lost my rights when I pre-ordered Andor on Blu-ray. <laughs> yep, you've lost them again. <laughs> That's coming out April thirtieth, along with Obi Wan Kenobi. Yep. Um. Anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway, that was uh that was this episode. <laughs> we hope uh, um we're actually changing our recording schedule because this whole. Trying to record it Saturday, post it Saturday isn't working. Nope, but it'll still be out on Saturday. Yep. Right now, as you're listening to this. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you for all for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.